Shalom, shalom, everyone. This is Ayana, and this is the Yahua Direct channel. I am your facilitator, and um, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening for all of you. Today, we are concluding the last day of Sakuth, and this is uh, the video for the last day of Sakuth, as it says in Yahua's word. We are to meet on the first day and the eighth day of Sakuth, and so this meeting is for that. So this is Sakuth giving thanks to Yahua. So let us begin. All right. So I wanted to go over a couple of the promises of Sakuth that Yahua gives in His Word. Um, we actually talked about this one in the first video uh, for Sakuth, and this was the uh, promise of um, Yahuwah giving his barakah for the next year. If you recall, uh, I talked about there were two promises made. The first one was um, that we were to give a gift to Yahuwah, excuse me, um, because Yahuwah uh, barakked us in the year, uh, in all of the year previous to Sakuth. And then this promise was to uh, Yahuwah would Barakah in the year to come. So let's go over it. Um, this is in uh, Debaryam, uh, which is Deuteronomy 16, 15. Seven days you should keep a serious feast to Yahuwah, your Allah Yakah, in the place where Yahuwah shall choose, because Yahuwah, your Alayaka, shall barakak you in your increase, in all the work of your hands. Therefore, you shall surely rejoice. So as we can see here, um, <clears throat> there's the words for uh, what is commonly known as blessing, which in this verse is barakak, right? And then we also have your hands. And as you can see here in a parenthesis, this is the Yaudyath, um, how you write that word out in Yaudyath. Um, we have the bath, rosh, kop, kop. And then for hands, we have the ya, dalt, uh, ya, kop. Now, what's interesting um, about this promise for the oncoming year, the next year, is that Barakak has, uh, it means to strongly Baruch you, right? To strongly bless you, right? But it shows the cop twice. And what that means is that it's a double portion of the hand. So, yes, the definition does mean uh, bless you in English, but it means more than the um, dictionary definition. By the use of these letters, it's saying that the barakah or the blessing is with two hands. Right? Two hands, that means you get a double portion, right? The same thing is in the word your hands, right? Because the cop means your, like you personally and you all, as in the nation, right? But it also is a hand. And in the case of this word hands, your hands, uh, you have the yod, right? So the letter Yod, but this is actually the word written out Yod. That is a hand, right? Usually showing strength, usually showing some sort of work or labor to be done. And then um, the cop, which is more of an open hand, um, open hand, you know, lifted up in prayer. You're usually asking for something when you have an open hand like that. So Yahuwah is going to bear you with two hands and um, he's going to put that double blessing into both types of your hands, into the working, right? Because Yahweh says, into your increase in all the work of your hands. So, uh, you know, the strength of your hand, the power, the might, um, 
to create, to labor, all of the work of your hands, and then also in the in the open hand, meaning to what you're asking for, what you're praying for, what you're what you are asking to receive. So in other words, Yahoo will doubly barak you or bless you and you will receive a double increase because of it and I thought that was significant in that promise so the next promise of Sakuth is you can find it in Shamuth 34 verses 22 through 24 and this is Yahuwah speaking and you shall observe the feast of weeks which is Shabu'e the first fruits of the wheat harvest, which is Bakor, the feast of ingathering. Now that is a sop, right? Um, a lot of people equate that to uh, Sakuth, but I'm not quite convinced, but that's what it says here at the end of the year. Three times in a year shall your men appear before Yahua, your Elua, the Elua of Yasharel. Right. For I will cast out nations before you and enlarge your borders. Neither any man shall desire your land when you go up to appear before Yahua, your Lua, three times a year. Now, um, there isn't much. Uh, to explain, because that means exactly what it says, but I will put this in because um, this is is the promise for I will cast out, um, overthrow nations, uh, before you and enlarge your borders, meaning that he will cast out the enemy and he will give you the enemy's land and increase your holdings as in physical holdings, right? And while you are gone from your land, um, No man shall desire, or the word actually should be covet. No man shall covet your land, meaning when you're gone from your land, no man will try to come and take it in your absence. He, Yahuwah will protect it when you go up to appear before him three times in a year. So by being um, faithful uh, to Yahuwah in the three required uh, attending feasts, which is stated above, Yahuwah is saying he will protect you. Now, a lot of us don't have land and we're not in our own land as far as Yasharel. But Yahuwah is giving, overall, he's giving a protection. He's saying, if you do this, if you appear before me, right, at the at what at the feast that he demands, and it says the all of your men. Um, in other verses, all of your men shall appear before Yahuwah three times a year. Um, the men of Yasharel <clears throat> and others that believe in Yahuwah. Um, he's saying that he will protect your land. So even if you do have property, right? If you have property wherever you live at, Yahuwah is giving you a promise that it will remain yours and no one will take it from you. Now, um, Spiritually speaking, your borders, your land, your spirit where you reside, Yahuwah will enlarge in your spirit. He will increase your spirit. He will cleanse your spirit. He will make it better if you observe him. When he says, so that is another promise of Sakuth. So, um, <clears throat> when I, uh, researched this, I came across the word Kassad, which in English, they translate that to mercy, but upon really digging into the word Kassad, it's better than mercy. So let's just go over this and then we'll talk about um the we'll talk about a psalm that uses kasad a lot. All right. So kasad, you can find that in H2616 and 17 and it means to have an abundance of desire, well-being for someone. 
to have an overswelling of affluence and prosperity to give. Now, um, when we think about the word mercy, we tend to think of it as a subjugated um, person asking for leniency of a punishment. So the scenario that I'm talking about is like when you see people, they are in court, you have a defendant, right? Someone who is being accused of some false or, or some wrongdoing or some sort of crime. And they ask the court for le- for mercy. You know, I'm throwing myself upon the mercy of the court or something like that. Now, that word mercy in that aspect, how we mostly know it today, describes the person, that person who wants to receive something that the court would not normally give, right? So when you say, oh, I'm throwing myself upon the mercy of the court, you're saying, okay, I'm asking for special consideration, you know, to not give me a severe punishment. I would like a, no punishment or a, a less severe punishment than what is normally subscribed. But <clears throat> in contrast to that, when you talk about the Yaudith word for mercy, which is kasad, all right? When you're talking about kasad is different because it means that there is so much kindness and desire from the giver of it that they give it all the time. They have so much of it, right? It's, and they give it often to the same person over and over and over again. So the difference between mercy and kasad is that mercy is all about the recipient. They're asking for special consideration, right? That is not normally given. Whereas kasad is focusing on the giver, the condition of the person who gives, the person who is prosperous and affluent in giving a kindness and consideration and well-being, and they can give that to someone, right? And that, in this case, kasad, the giver, is Yahuwah. And as you can see here in this illustration, you see uh, the mother, you know, she's kindly uh, patting her son on the head. Uh, That's the closest illustration to Kassad that I could give. You know, she has an overabundance of affection and, and wants well for her son. And so she has her hand on his head to let him know that, hey, you know, I want, I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy to give this. I'm happy to help you. I'm happy. You know, I want you to do well. And that's the best illustration I could come up with for Kassad. So saying all of that, let's take a look at the Hayim 136. And it talks a lot about the Kassad of Yahuwah. So here we go. <clears throat> Throw praise or yada to Yahua for his good, for his kasad, his overflowing, his overflowing desire, his overflowing feelings of well-being for you is forever. Yada to the Alua of Aluyam, to the G.O.D.s of G.O.D.s, for his kasad is forever. Throw praise to the master of masters for his kasad, his overwhelming, overwhelming abundance of well-being and desire for your good is forever. For his great separate work stand alone, for his kasad is forever. For the works of the shamayim in his wisdom, for his kasad is forever. For stretching out the earth above the waters, for his kasad is forever. To him who made the great lights, for his kasad is forever. The sign of the sun to rule the day, for his kasad is forever. The sign of the moon and the stars to rule the night, for his kasad is forever. That struck Mitzrayim in their firstborn, 
for his cassade is forever. And bought Yasharel from the middle of them, for his cassad is forever. With a firm hand and an outstretched arm, for his cassad is forever. Who divided Yam Soup, which is the Red Sea in English, into two parts, for his cassad is forever. And Yasharel passed through the middle of it. For his cassad is forever and shook Pharaoh and his strength, meaning his armies in Yom Sof, soup for his cassad is forever and walked his people into the wilderness for his cassad is forever. And he shook great kings for his cassad is forever. Sihon, king of the Amorites, for his cassad is forever. And Ayug, king of Bashan, for his cassad is forever. And gave their land for possession, for his cassad is forever. A possession for his servant, Yasharel, for his cassad is forever. Our lowliness. And this is for us. Our lowliness in it, he remembered us. For his cassad is forever. And redeemed us from our enemies. For his cassad is forever. Who gives bread to all flesh. For his cassad is forever. To throw praise, Yada Yahua, to Alua of the Shamayayim, for his kasad is forever. All of these things that Yahua did, I'm going to go back a slide. All of these things that Yahua did was for his people. Everything. In this first paragraph, it's, it's just because of Yahua, right? Yahua is the master of masters. Yahua is the Alua of all Allah Ya'am, right? This is just that. It's just because of who he, who, who he is. Who he is, who he is, is what I meant to say. Sorry about that. But the works of his Shamayin, right? who began to form the earth. He did everything he did. And, and we have gone over the first chapter of Bereshoth or Genesis. Please take a look at that series. He did all of that. He set all that up so that he could place man on the land. You go through all them days. Go through all seven days. Right? All of that was a setup and a prelude to place man on the earth for stretching out the earth above the waters for his kasad, his overabunding well-being for us is forever. All these things he did because of that kasad, right? He made the great lights. He made the sun. He made the moon and the stars. He struck down Egypt in their firstborn. He brought Yasharel out from Mitzrayim, right? He defended Yasharel. He's parted the Yam Soup so that they could walk on dry land, not mud, dry, dry, because Yahua has an overabundance of desirous love and well being for us as a nation and us individually. He took us into the wilderness, right? As a nation, I'm talking as a nation, right? Because Yasserel is still around today. Don't all the people who believe in him, you are the nation of Yasserel. And who follow his word, you are the nation of Yasserel. That's what I mean by us. Us then and us now, the nation of Yasserim. 
He shook down kings. Right? And here's a couple of the kings. Right? And he gave us their possessions. And he will do that again because Yahuwah's kasad is forever. And especially here, this is us individually. Our lowliness. He remembers us. He redeems us from our enemies because Yahuwah's kasad his abundance of well-being and desire for us is forever. So Yada Yahua, your Alua, give him praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Ab Yahua. So the last thing, because this is a short presentation, um, the last thing I wanted to go over is Yahua proclaims himself when Masha asks to see him. And he puts Masha, this is earlier in um, Shemuth 34, chapter 34. Um, I'll be talking about verses five through seven, but earlier Masha asked him, you know, let me see if, you know, if I find, you know, um, Canaan, if I'm favored in your sight, please let me see you. Yahuwah tells Masha, well, you can't see my face and live, but what I will do is I'll place you safely in this, in this rock, in this cleft, right? And I'll walk past you. I'll cover you as I walk before you because even in that, he did not desire Masha to die by seeing his face. So he said, I'll cover you with my hand. And when I walk by, I'll, I'll let my hand up and you can see me going. Hallelujah. To be able to see Yahuwah walking away. Hallelujah. All right. So here's the verses. Shemuth 34 verses 5 through 7. And this is what Yahuwah proclaims himself. And Yahuwah came down in a cloud and stood with him there and he called in the name of Yahuwah. And Yahuwah passed before him and declared, Yahuwah, Yahuwah all, who's compassionate, graceful, slow to anger, or also long suffering. That's the same thing. Slow to anger, long suffering, in abundant and abundant in kasad and truth. Now remember, kasad is already in overabundance and overswelling. So Yahuwah put another abundant on top of that, right? I'm abundant in abundance of desire and love and well being and truth. Preserving the cassade of thousands, that's me and you, bearing the perversion and rebellion and the sin, and purifying the not pure. Appointing the perversion of the fathers onto the children and onto the grandchildren, onto the third and the fourth of them. So I have in parentheses the third, uh, how we would say it today. That would be, uh, Yahweh says, uh, appointing the perversion of the fathers onto their children and unto their children's children, which, which, which would be grandchildren, and unto the third, which would be great-grandchildren, and the fourth, which would be great-great-grandchildren. That's not in scripture. That's why I have it in parentheses. I just wanted to put it in a way that we understand today. So, in Yahuwah's description of himself, hallelujah, he says that he preserves the cassade of thousands. That's you, that's me, that's us. Over and over again, remember the definition says that it's done over and over and over again, and it's still an abundance, often to the same person, right? And he bears our perversion or he bears our depravity. 
and our rebellion to his word and our sin. Kata, say kata, because that's the word for sin. He bears our kata. And he purifies the ones that are not pure. Now saying that, these three feasts in the, in the, in the seventh month, right? The first feast was the Ruah. And you can see that in Shemuth chapter 19, verse 10. And he tells Yasserel in that verse to wash their clothes because he's going to meet them on the third day. Right? That word wash is kabas. And it does mean to physically wash the dirt out of your clothes, but metaphorically, it means to be pure. So on Thruea or Terua, however you want to pronounce that, Feast of Trumpets, we were to get physically clean, but also be spiritually clean to meet Yahuwah. In Yahun Kapar, and you can see this in um, Uyakra or Leviticus 16, chapter 16, verse 30. In that, he told us that he wanted to cleanse our sins and to be clean. The word cleanse and to be clean is tahar, and that means to be pure. Again, this is a spiritual, whereas in Thruea, it was a physical and also metaphorically a spiritual to be pure. In Yom Kapar, he says, spiritually, I want you to be clean. Right? I want you to cleanse you of your sins. Well, here we are in Sakuth, right? And in what his proclamation of himself, what Yahuwah is and what he does, he says that he wants to purify the not pure or he wants to cleanse the unclean. Preserving the facade of thousands. I'm going to go more above that. Millions. Bearing the perversion and the rebellion. Think of you. Think of you. And what you have done. He bears that. And purifies you. Because he has his overwhelming. Overabundant desire. And love for your well-being, my well-being, our well-being. Hallelujah. And with that, I want to take a moment and give a prayer of Yada Yahuwah. I want us together to please pray as I'm praying or you can pray after I pray, after you listen to this prayer. But please give your thanksgiving to Yahuwah right now. I want you to think about everything I just said. Yahuwah's kasad, Yahuwah's kasad for you. Yahuwah's kasad for your family. Yahuwah's kasad for your neighbors. Yahuwah's kasad for your ancestors. Yahuwah's kasad for your descendants. Yahuwah's kasad, how it's given to you over and over and over and over and over and over, and it never runs dry as long as you love him and are obedient to him and his commandments. Think about that. Think about all everything that we talked about, what Yahuwah did and how he prepared for man, for you, for the nation of Yasserel. He made the earth. He made dry land. He made the sun and the moon and the stars. He overthrew you and redeemed you from your enemies. I'm talking about you, not just the nation of Yasserel. I'm talking about you today. You, 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 what your enemies are, seen and unseen. He delivered you out of their hands. And I'm talking about me too, not just you. I'm not preaching at you. I'm talking about us. I know what Yahweh has done for me. Hallelujah. 
one year ago I was in the ICU. I had bleeding issues. I had health issues. I had seizures. They was talking about some tumors in my uterus. They was talking about I was going to bleed to death because they couldn't figure out what was wrong with me. I made my will because my death was imminent. But Yahuwah, in his cassade for me, preserved me. Hallelujah. I sat in that hospital that was full to capacity of people who had that, that virus that we've been suffering from since 2020. I can't say it because of YouTube, but you know what I'm talking about. Full to capacity. Yahuwah made a place for me to be in a bed in the ICU. I should not have been alive. My blood count, I don't know if it's the INR count, but my red blood set count was down to four point something, 4.8. And the nurses said to me, you, I don't know how you alive with that low of a count. You should not even be alive. Hallelujah. And I did not catch that disease that was rife in that hospital. Hallelujah. One year ago, one year later, Yahuwah, I'm here and I'm testifying and I'm saying that Yahuwah gets every bit of thanks from the bottom of my heart to the entirety of my being. Hallelujah. Thank you, Ab Yahuwah. Thank you, Ab Yahuwah. Thank you, Ab Yahuwah. I don't know if I'm going to be able to finish this prayer. I am trying to keep my composure. But all I know that he preserved me in all my sin of the past and all the wayward thoughts that I sometimes still have. Some of the sins I ask for every day, twice a day, three times a day, and he still gives me his cassad every time I ask. And I know he does because I'm still here. Hallelujah. He makes my rightful judgment pass from me. He passed his hand over all of us, a Yaun Kapar. For those of you who asked for forgiveness. If you wake up, if you breathing, if you can eat, if you got health, if you got a home, if you got you able to uh, provide for yourself, if you got family, if you can blink. You need to give praise to Yahoo. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Abiyahua, I want to thank you personally. I know what you have done for me. I know what you've done for me, and I keep it in mind. You took me off that dunghill in a mess of my life that I made myself. And you cleansed me and you put me in a high place. And you have healed every wound, every heartache, every bruise, every broken bone. You have preserved me before I even knew who you were. Hallelujah. 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 I thank you, Ab Yahuwah, on my behalf and on my family's behalf and on my children's behalf and on my friend's behalf and on my neighbor's behalf and in my community where I live to the people who may be listening to this. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Yahuwah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Father. 
Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for everything you've done. And I'm going to thank you for the stuff that you held back, the stuff, the enemies that had plotted on me and I had not known for the judgments that was coming down on me and you caused it not to be. For all my sins, the every sin you've ever forgiven of me, I thank you, Father. I thank you that I'm able to even speak right now in your Kadash name. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you for freeing me from strongholds. Thank you. And I won't go over my whole everything you've done, but I want to say thank you. And on behalf of all of us, Abiyahua, you see us. Everything hidden in our heart. I'm talking about the nation of Yasserel. You see every one of us in us collectively. You know who we are. You know whose we are. And I want to thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Abiyahua. I can't say nothing else. I, I, I wish I could say more things, but thank you. I don't even think the words thank you or tuda is enough. I don't think it's enough, but I just want to thank you. I know we're supposed to rejoice, but with all that I have done and all that you have cleansed and all that you have provided and all that you have done and all that you haven't done and all that you're doing right now and in all that you will do and all that you will hold back, I want to say thank you. And to please forgive us. Because we're ignorant. We're sinful. We do rebel. We do break your commandments. And I just say thank you for your cassade. Your cassade. That never runs out for us. Thank you, Father. And I ask this in your Kodash name. Yahua, Yahua all. Yahua our Alua. Yahua, the Alua of Allah Ya'am. Yahua, the master of masters. And I say hallelujah through Yahusha, our kinsman, redeemer, hallelujah. Thank you.